So after having produced a video on some of the negative or worrying aspects of the apparitions at Garabandal, I thought it would be fair to present some of the positive evidence. So I'm going to present five really amazing aspects of the apparitions of Our Lady at Garabandal that lend credibility to the idea that Our Blessed Mother really did appear in that small Spanish village. So this is a general point, but it is worth noting that unlike at other apparitions or purported apparitions of Our Lady, the seers of Garabandel have went into the background. They are not going around the world making loads of money out of purported apparitions. They haven't um, hung around in Garabandal. They're not there all the time trying to, you know, promote the message, promote themselves. Instead, they've lived um, Catholic lives, good Catholic lives in the world. Um, and this uh, is to the apparitions credit. And furthermore, the same can be said of the fans, the supporters of the apparitions at Garabandal. In the books that they've written, they've not hidden the the difficult things from the apparitions. All the research I did from the last video was taken from uh, books written by great supporters of the apparitions of Garabandal. They're completely open about the phenomena that occurred there, which is quite different from Medjugorje, where there's been a lot of revision about the sequence of events, what happened in the first couple of weeks of the apparitions. There's been loads of revisionism in the history of Medjugorje, and a lot of that is down to some of its supporters, but we can't say that about Garabandal. And all this suggests a fundamentally good spirit about the apparitions. There's an honesty, there's a transparency, there's an openness about what occurred there. And for the supporters of Garabandal, they offered explanations as to some of the, the strange phenomena that I spoke about in the last video. And some of the explanations are convincing. The first apparition of Our Lady in Garabandal was on the 2nd of July, and in those days, uh, as it still is in the extraordinary form calendar, this is the feast of the visitation of Our Lady to her cousin Elizabeth. And actually, there's something really befitting about Our Lady going to Garabandal on that date. The opening lines of the Gospel she in those days she went to the hill country of Judea and for a lot of Garabandal supporters that provides um, a really supernatural reflection on what occurred at the apparitions. Our Lady indeed went in haste to the mountain country of Cantabria in northern Spain and you can imagine on the day of that first apparition, the priests, the people in Holy Mass, hearing those words and reflecting, wow, this is happening here, Our Lady is coming to this mountain. And even more than that, the visitation is a mystery, is a mystery of, of, of pure joy. It is Elizabeth spending time with her younger cousin, Our Blessed Lady. And the girls said that Our Lady used to appear to them and speak to them as if she was a friend, as if she was someone they knew so intimately. She, of course, is their mother, and that was something that really was put across to them through the apparitions of Garabandal. There's an intimacy in these apparitions as the children laugh and joke with Our Lady and talk to her about mundane things in their life. She's interested in every aspect of their life, just as she would have been for Saint Elizabeth during the time she stayed with her after the visitation. This is very well known that the children when they were in the ecstatic state they had this ability of recognizing holy objects because it wasn't them who was doing the recognizing it was Our Lady she would tell them things about the items that they were presenting to her to be kissed there's a famous story of the powder compact the makeup 
compact that somebody had presented to be blessed or kissed by Our Lady and everyone was a bit disturbed why is this vain item being presented to Our Lady and she said back to the children this item belongs to my son and after the apparitions the children relayed that to the audience and then the owner of the makeup compact um, said yes it was uh, used as a pix to store the Blessed Sacrament in the days of the Spanish Civil War. So there was this knowledge of holy objects that Our Lady uh, gave to the children. She was there recognizing the holy objects. And then there's the fact that the children, through Our Lady's guidance, although they were looking up into the air, looking at Our Lady, they were able to return objects to their owners. And they had no idea, humanly speaking, who the owners were. This is a gift that a lot of the saints of the church have had, particularly Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. She could tell you uh, if a relic was genuine. She could tell you the, the, the history of that relic. And it seems like Our Lady was sharing this knowledge with the children. So I think I saw this story in Jose Luis Saavedra's book about Garabandal recently. He talks about how Marie Loli went into an ecstatic trance in her house and her house happened to be the village tavern and she went down the stairs in this ecstatic trance and down the stairs uh, in the main area of the tavern there was a wedding reception going on and Marie Lowley walked right through the wedding reception. You can imagine what that was like. Um, this girl with her head up in the air in, in an ecstatic trance. And she went out the front door. And then she went into the house of the, gr the bride. Um, I went up the stairs. I went into her um, bedroom and found a scapula. Um, picked up the scapula and then walked back to the pub and present and in the middle of all the celebrations went over to the bride and said to her something along the lines of our lady says you ought never to take off this scapula and then afterwards the bride relates how she normally wore that scapula every day it just so happened that with all the wedding clothes she didn't put it on and so this is, to me, this is quite an amazing story because how did Marie Lowley know about this, about this scapula? How did she even see that she wasn't wearing it? Um, those wedding dresses in those days weren't immodest like ours. Um, she wouldn't have known that the girl wasn't wearing the scapula. But Our Lady seems to have told her and commanded her to bring the scapula over to the bride. So here we think about how the children continue to live their intense spiritual life when all the visitors, all the tourists, all the sightseers had disappeared. During the winters at Garabandal, the place was very cut off. And especially after the bishop gave his disapproval to the apparitions, very few people were making their way there. And yet the ecstatic trances, um, the marches through the village, the morning rosaries, it all continued. There are accounts of, um, there's a lovely story of, I think it's Jacinta, in the early morning, I think it's 4 a.m., She's called out of her home by Our Lady and she goes to the church and there she is kneeling on the snowy ground by the church with her mother by her side for a couple of hours, slowly praying the rosary without any coat on. Um, Our Lady seemed to keep the children warm when they were in these ecstasies. This kind of thing just shows an authenticity to the apparitions because Children of 11 years old, especially ones from this uh, rural backward part of Spain, as it was at the time, if they were making something up, the cold winter would have put an end to it. The lack of attention, the fact that a lot of the villagers were then beginning to mock them and think that they were uh, uh, crazy or something. 
it would have put a stop to the apparitions. But in fact, during those winters, the first two, the, there were two winters in Garabandal when the apparitions were in their full force. We see an intense spiritual life on behalf of those otherwise normal children. And for me, this lends a lot of credibility to the truth of the apparitions. How it would have been beautiful to have been in Garabandal in those winters, seeing the children rushing out of their homes in the early morning to pray. No one else around, perhaps their parents by their side. In those winter nights, when the sky is so dark, there's no street lights, there's, there's only the natural light of the stars, and there they are, in the, in the middle of the, uh, the pines, perhaps, praying. This is awesome. This is amazing. And this is one of the things for me that really makes me want to believe in the truth of the apparitions at Garabandal, in spite of all of the problems that I raised in the previous video. And so may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.